Okay guys, welcome. It is Tuesday, May 19th. Two things to say right off the bat. Yes, I am attempting to grow a beard. Um, my wife has never let me do that, so we'll see how this goes. Yes, and I know it looks really rough and yeah. Okay, second thing. This is not a scary shirt I'm wearing. I've worn it before and people are like, oh, Skull. No, this is classic novel by S.E. Hinton, The Outsiders, bought this at the book, man. So not scary, it's one of my favorite shirts. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, we had a couple leaders that stepped up and did that cardboard challenge. So we got a couple clips here, check it out. All right, so you guys are gonna make sure that you check the YouTube page tomorrow for the full video of Matt making that bee costume because it is incredible. My son Liam wanted to make a cardboard video himself, but if you are familiar with Liam's video making skills, they don't often follow the rules. Yeah, that was a little snapshot from his video he did like a month ago or whatever. So anyways, here's Liam's video and it is entitled, Where Babies Come From. Uh, gotta take out the garbage. What? Doorbell? Oh man, not another delivery? Since you guys are stuck at home, maybe uh, you want to do a little tie-dye. So it's super easy and most of these things you probably have at home. So you need a white shirt, um, just some gloves, some dye. We have the writ and a bottle and a garbage bag and that's really all you need. Before we start, you're going to want to dampen your white t-shirt. I'm just going to fill the water bottle with the dye and we are going to use warm water to dilute the dye. With my damp shirt, I am going to do the crinkle method. You basically just scrunch up the shirt however you want it and put rubber bands all around it to keep it in place. I'm just adding a little salt to the dye and I am gonna cover the shirt completely in the dye and when it is all done, I'm just gonna wrap it up in this plastic bag and let it sit for eight to 24 hours. We're gonna rinse the shirt in cold water until the water runs clear and then we're gonna cut all the elastic bands off that were holding it together and then we are going to turn on the hot water and just rinse it underneath that just to seal the color. And there you have your tie-dye shirt. Remember that after you do wash it in the washing machine, the color will fade quite a bit. Hey, welcome. So we've got Will, we've got Chloe, we've got Lola. We're gonna do a little game show tonight. Um, so I wanna welcome you guys here. So first one here, we have hamsters in a wheel 
or a doll's face. So, Will, we're going to start with you. Which, what do you think it is? I'm going to go with hamsters and a wheel. Chloe, go ahead. There's a bit of a red circle in there, and yeah. that's the actual hamster wheel, and the blue is them just trying to pull it in. Okay, you're both hamsters wheels. Lola, what do you think? Uh, I think it's a hamster wheel, too. It's a doll's face! Really? Yeah. Really? Okay, so Will, wow. uh, Will, like I said, you're a grade six leader, so you're here just to um, slightly embarrass you. I'm um, trying to guess these, these drawings here. Now, Chloe, you are in um, Mary Kate and Grace's core group, is that correct? I am correct. You are. And Lola, who's, whose core group are you in? Kayla and Marissa. Okay, perfect. So you guys are representing them. So you guys got to at least get a couple points here. So we're going to do a couple of them. Next one here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lola, go. Uh, I think it's a peacock. Okay, Lola, okay, okay, Chloe, what about yourself? And I can definitely see that as being a peacock. Will, what do you what do you think it is? I'm gonna go with a butterfly. So let's see what it is. It is a peacock. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Baby Jesus is bird or a talking a man eating bear. Lola, you look so serious. You look so serious as you're looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chloe, what do you think it is? I'm gonna go with the first one. You're going with baby Jesus birth? I'm going with baby Jesus birth. Okay, Lola, what about yourself? I'm gonna go attacking a man eating bear. And Will throwing it? I mean, it looks like a bear down there, but what's the dude floating up there? I, <laughs> I, I'm okay. gonna have to go with baby Jesus. Take a look. It is baby Jesus. All right, so you are watching this video now. There is a good chance you have been raised at Northview Church or another church. You've grown up, you've gone to kids ministry. Now you're in middle school ministry and you have heard innumerable times in your life that God loves you. You've also heard innumerable times in your life that you are to live out that love towards others. But here's the thing, guys. I think we have a really, really difficult time fully grasping what God's love is like. So we hear this, we hear this, we hear this, we hear we are to live like this, but we have a real disconnect, right? And we sometimes get in situations and we have to remind ourselves, oh, right, I'm supposed to be nice to that person. Anyways. I've got a little video clip here. This is Gareth from Wren Collective, um, the guys that sing My Lighthouse and sing Build Your Kingdom Here. You guys have all sung these songs at, at youth group, at church, at chapel. Check out what Gareth says just about being overwhelmed by the love of God. I remember a few years ago sitting watching the sunrise. It was a typical misty Irish morning and there was a magical stillness in the air. Something happened that day that I didn't see coming. You see, I've grown up in church. I've been surrounded by the fact that Jesus loves me since I was born. But that day, something new flooded my soul. My eyes were opened and I was totally overwhelmed by the reality of God. And <laughs> I don't know what happened, but this uncontrollable urge took over me. I jumped to my feet and started sprinting through the fields like a wild man, laughing and crying with pure joy. See, here's the thing. That guy, Gareth, he got it. It was literally in his life like a light bulb going off. And you hear what he said. He grew up all his life hearing that. He knew that. He knew intellectually that God loved him. He knew intellectually that he was to live out that love. But it wasn't until he just let himself be overwhelmed by God's Holy Spirit there that his life was dramatically changed. And if you know anything about that band, they literally lived this out. So anyways, I want to read the key verse. When we talk about God is love, okay, of course, we're anchoring this in Scripture. So let's read this Scripture verse here. So 1 John chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So two points here we want to consider. And here they are. 
is that God is the source of love and that God is the model of love. So when we read in the Bible that God is love, we have to understand that God by his very existence defines what love is. As the scripture explains, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity actually defines exactly what love is. There is no arguing, there is no tension, there is no pride, there is no jealousy, there is no loneliness, there is total support, there is total communication, and in everything there is respect and enjoyment of one another. And guys, that is how when we talk about that God personifies love, that is exactly what we're talking about here. So when you think about what does God's love mean to you, think about those statements that I just read out there. And then think about those statements on how then you are to understand that and live that out in your life. And that's where we want to go to that God is the model for the love. And of course, we've got to jump into scripture here. Now, the verse I'm going to read out, I want you to understand as we head into the summer, even with the whole COVID thing and stuff like that, I want you to understand this is often known as the wedding verse. Okay. But this is literally the verse that teaches us how we are to live out God's love towards others. So check this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So God's love is sacrificial, it is merciful, and it is faithful. So guys, I want you to understand, for us to actually live out God's love towards others like that, to live out our life where we are sacrificially loving others, where we're being full of mercy, where we're being faithful towards others, this isn't something that you can do on your own. This isn't something where you can just sit there. Remember I talked about the intellectual ascent that you just can't sit there and go, yes, I will do that. You've got to be like Gareth there from Wren Collective, where he literally surrenders himself to God and allows God by his Holy Spirit to guide him and empower him in living out his faith. You know, we are living in a really crazy time right now. And I know that a lot of you are stuck in your home still um, to a certain degree. Maybe you're not getting along so much with your family right now. You're just really wanting, wanting to get out there. Guys, can I just really encourage you? Can I just like challenge you there? That if your life is rooted in Christ, if your life is rooted in the knowledge of who you are as God's child, allow God by his Holy Spirit to empower you to share God's love in a very real way with the people around you. Guys, I want to throw up one last diagram here. Check this out. I did not draw this diagram. <laughs> I grabbed this off the intro web, okay? But I love the way that it looks here. Because I am right with God, I can also be what I should be to others. And when I get along well with God, then I will also get along well with others. Guys, I know some little kid drew that or what, but it's truth, right? Our relationship with God will determine how we can live out God's love towards others. So guys, I want to encourage you in the next few days to just take some quiet time, sit down. Okay, your leader's going to be giving you a bunch of verses tonight, okay, that you can like chew into. So just take some time and just read through those verses on God's love. And read through those verses on what that means then for us as his followers, as his children, to live out that love and to reflect that to the world. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.